dear fellow brothers and sisters, knights and dames of our order, dear brother chaplains, dear friends, volunteers, and young members, I am very happy that I may address to you on this Easter Sunday, blessed and happy Easter. The current situation related to the diffusion of the coronavirus does not allow us to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord in our churches with our communities of faithful as we would have done normally. So in communion now with the risen Lord present among us and in communion with all the members of our order especially with our Grand Master and with all those we serve, I will now invite you to listen to the page of today's Gospel, according to John, that will be followed by a brief commentary. Then I shall proclaim the prayer of consecration of our order to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. It is an historical event, a one of a kind act that is done by the express wish and under the authority of the 80th Grand Master Fra Giacomo dalla Torre del Tempio di San Guinetto, the only person who has the authority to decide. All the members of the order must know that from this day on, the Sovereign Order of Malta has been consecrated to the hearts of Jesus and Mary. This process involves committing the whole order to a deepening of our spirituality at this particular moment of our history. At a personal level, each person is invited to place themselves before God with confidence and with determination in order to love and to serve their brothers with the sentiments which were those of Christ Jesus, to place themselves in a school of his heart according to the words of the Lord himself. Anyone who chooses to take this path in their life and trusts the step they are taking to the maternal solicitude of Mary, she is the privileged way which leads to her son. To conclude, I would like to present you and your families my best wishes for the holy and happy from the Gospel according to St. John, on the first day of the week, Mary of Magda came to the town early in the morning, while well, it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the town. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloths that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed, for they did not yet 
understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The beloved disciple in whom the tradition recognizes the author of the fourth gospel refers to an experience which is both personal and ecclesial. He finds himself together with Peter, both of them struck in their mourning and in a sadness at the death of Jesus. When Mary of Magdalene comes to meet them and informs them that the Lord has disappeared from the tomb in which he had been led. Together they begin to run. John stops in front of the tomb, allowing Peter to enter first, and in this way to discover the founding event of the faith of the Church. John follows him into the tomb and speaking about himself in a formula of extraordinary depth, states, he saw and he believed. We may ask ourselves, quite simply, what John has, had seen and what he believed. He sees only the empty tomb and the lying cloth and the cross which had been over his head, but the interpretation of this fact, already in itself unheard of, imposes itself upon him through an illumination of his spirit and of his heart, in an act of faith which is inspired by the word of the scriptures. The disciples had not understood, says the evangelist, that Jesus was to rise from the dead in accordance with the scriptures. Without saying, John believed that Jesus had risen. Dear brothers and sisters, we find ourselves today in the same position as Peter and John when they ran to the tomb, struck ourselves too by sadness and from men, by mourning. In a trial which today has struck the whole of humanity. When the proclamation remains the same, Christ has risen. This does not cease to be a proclamation of joy. Death has been defeated, and for the victory of the risen Lord, the gates of heaven have been thrown open. Christ is risen. Christ is truly risen. You are the Son of God. You have the words of eternal life. A blessed Easter to you and to your loved ones. Wishing you strength, hope and consolation from Christ the Lord. In the name of his most eminent highness, the Prince and Grand Master of the Sovereign Military and Hospitaller Order of St. John of Jerusalem, of Rhodes and Malta, Fra Giacomo, Relatore del Tempio di San Minetto. I am not now going to proclaim the prayer of the act of consecration of our order to the sacred heart of Jesus and to the immaculate heart of Mary. O oh, sacred heart of Jesus, O oh, immaculate heart of Mary, superabundant source of the living waters of the Holy Spirit and of the charity of God, we consecrate to you, in complete submission and love, the sovereign military and hospitaller order of St. John of Jerusalem, of Rhodes, and of Malta. We offer you 
our spirits and our bodies, our souls and our hearts, our interior and our exterior goods, everything that we are and everything that we have. We entrust you all those to whose service we are sent, our lords, the sick and the poor. We ask you always to recognize in them the face of Christ the Lord. We entrust you also all those who assist them. We implore you to surround us all with your holy protection, especially in times of trial. We beg you to make of each one of us religious obediences, knights and dames, chaplains, volunteers, young members, humble and superabundant instruments of your charity and loving servants of our brothers in need. Make us Make of us true servants of the graces received by your family throughout the length of its history. Through the intercession of our patron, Saint John the Baptist, of our founder, Blessed Gerald, respecting our traditions, being firmly resolved to be of service to the most deprived of our brothers and in unshakable fidelity to the Holy Church and to her supreme pastor, the successor of Peter. Sacred Heart of Jesus, we place our trust in you. Immaculate Heart of Mary, intercede 